Oh, well, thank you so much, Peter, for that beautiful song. Everybody tune in Monday night at 7 to see the first, first ever virtual Coffee House of the Muse. Yeah, that's really exciting. 7 o'clock on Monday night. Yeah, I'm glad they found a way to do it virtually because I know that's kind of a lot of people's favorite thing to do every week over the winter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm glad everyone has a chance to do it again. Awesome. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had to bring Julian in this week. There were so many exciting things and scary things um, that happened in the political sphere um, of our country this week. So we are really excited to have Julian Sear join us here this morning. Hi. Hi Good morning. How Just are you? Take this off. We're six feet apart. Yeah. We're being vigilant here. Um, <laughs> What a week. I, I thought I was going to have a busy week. It, it's the end of the legislative sessions. So the legislative sessions run, runs every two years. Uh, a new one starts on, on January 6th, which I didn't understand would be such a significant day. Um, and so we were in session finishing up a whole host of bills. We did climate change legislation, um, economic development, transportation, all these things we've been working on. We were actually in session until 4, 45 AM, oh my gosh. A, 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 a late night. Um, and then I was sworn in again on, on Wednesday, uh, took an oath to um, represent the people of the Cape Islands District and, and to uphold the U.S. Constitution. I, I didn't, at the time, realize how significant that would be. We got sworn in at 11, elected our Senate president at 1, and as we were wrapping up, um, just to witness you know, what happened in Washington, uh, which is so clearly um, acts of sedition, uh, traitorous acts. I mean, there's so many, there's so much to sort of unpack here, right? But the most important kind of, the most essential piece here is that, you know, look, these are traitorous acts and traitorous Americans that are instigated by um, a political demagogue who, right, is a loser in every way, including in this election. Um, and it's just... <sighs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot. So it, it, it's been a, a significant time, but there's also so much promise, right? And, and I guess that's, if that was 2020, it sort of continued into 2021, right? Where um, we're in such a, uh, in such a difficult yet crucial time. And I think what happens now and what happens in the next 12 days and what happens in the next uh, you know, in this new administration uh, and how we respond to this pandemic really is gonna determine Right, the, the course of our lives, even even out here on Land's End. Right. Yeah, it's. I think part of being an American and being a patriot is having trust and faith in the systems that have been created, and you have the power built into our system of government as having the power to change anything you want to change. And but there is a hard line drawn. There, you have your right to assembly, but there is a line drawn in what is beyond. Your well, let's be clear. This isn't about assembly or right. about peaceful protest, you know, this is actually about trying to overthrow one of the branches of our federal government, right? The first branch of our, our government of the Constitution, right? The Constitution outlines Congress first, right? Because Congress is the most direct representation of the people. And so to have uh, this mob of seditionists who, uh, who have not only the audacity to sort of stage this stunt right um but then to see you know we in a post 9 11 world people like me right really assume that what we've gotten really good at in this country it's like we know how to create a bubble we know how to create security we have spent billions upon billions of dollars fighting terrorism and to see that one branch the, the most representative branch that's closest to the people of our branch of our federal government was so vulnerable to domestic terrorism, and this is what this so clearly is, right. to see that it's so vulnerable to domestic terrorism, and then to see that people aren't even held accountable. I mean, there were five times, DC law enforcement arrested five times the number of people on a day, one day in June, as, was, as were arrested on January 6th. I mean, that is completely outrageous. I mean, these are domestic terrorists who need to be held accountable. And, you know, I, I, I'm encouraged and I know that the Justice Department and the Biden administration is gonna address this in the way that this should be, which, but these are very clearly domestic terrorists and we need to be honest about that and that this truly is a threat to representative democracy, right? If, 
if elected representatives can't go about their job representing the people, literally can't go about their job, right? Because they are physically threatened and there's violence brought against them. That, that is a direct threat to um, representative democracy, to the 200 plus years of, of, of this democratic experiment. We haven't seen something like this ha happen actually since 1812. And it was a foreign power, the British, who, who ransacked the United States Capitol. And so, you know, I, I think the, the contrasts as well are so, are, are just so appalling, right? To see um, the largely peaceful uh, civil disobedience and protest that so many of us, including all of us, were involved in, uh, in May and late May and in June and July and ongoing in reaction to, you know, the murder of George Floyd, demanding Black Lives Matter, um, <laughs> to see how, to see how those, Amer you know, those patriotic Americans, I would say, right, who are trying to push this country to actually live up to its truest ideals, how us, how we, how they were treated, but particularly how black and brown Americans are treated in contrast to white supremacists or domestic terrorists, there just has to be a reckoning and there has to be a change. And if there's anything I'm hopeful about, I think there was such a visceral, for some members, not every, not all, but for some members, the, the, the visceral experience of being physically, potentially physically harmed, of having to escape your workplace, right? You know, this is the, 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 the Senate chamber, the House, it's a workplace. Mm -hmm. That experience, I think, has, has rightly shaken um, people from all walks of life, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and, and uh, I hope this spurs some further change. And on top of all that, though, right, it, you know, we also had so much to celebrate on that day and, and so much promise, particularly in the news out of Georgia, particularly in what's, um, uh, you know, what, what's sort of to come. And so to be so, to be so close to such long overdue needed um, change and also just like a restoration of decency, uh, the next 12 days are, are, are very anxious and concerning. Um, the president should be removed for the, through, through the 25th Amendment. Um, if that, that's not going to be done, I think impeachment's going to start. There's a real question constitutionally whether he can be impeached after he's in office. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a growing consensus that certainly he should be prohibited from ever holding that office again. I mean, he's just a, a, a demagogue who, who so clearly in every way is a, a loser, and we cannot have this dangerous person um, serving anymore. I'll just add, I think we need to also recognize that social media platforms have some real culpability here. Um, and the fact that white supremacists and domestic terrorists have been allowed to um, uh, organize against the United States government on these platforms. Um, look, we have a very proud, fierce tradition of free speech in this country that I think all of us, especially as queer folks, right, we really defend and, and are going to go to bat for. But, um, you know, you just look at it in contrast to um, uh, what uh, what international terrorists or, or terrorists outside of our borders, right, how they've been treated on those platforms, it's very, very different. Um, so there's a there's a lot that needs to come of this. I, 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 I think a number of us saw this, happen, saw this coming, um, but it's, uh, it's, it, 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 it's quite the time. Uh, but the most important thing, right, is in truth, this was a several hours disruption. Unfortunately, five people lost their lives. Um, but the Congress was back at work. They upheld the United States Constitution. Um, and actually, just around 4 in the morning, uh, the day after we were in session till 4 in the morning, um, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were, were ratified to be um, the next president and vice president of the United States. And that's going to go forward on January 20th. Um, and that is going to make the world a difference. I mean, you were here the day that Donna Brazil was here, where we talked about how do you reach across the aisle and engage with people? And it's very easy to say, well, 74 million people voted for this and 74 million people like this and agree with it. And I don't think that that's true. Like, it's very hard for me to believe that half the country liked what they saw on the television that day. I don't think it's true either. And, and, and I know this because, you know, look, I've, I, I represent about 180,000 people in the Cape Lions district. And, and when I, when I first ran for office, especially in 2016, when I was up for re-election in 2018, right, we went door to door. I've had conversations with people from all walks of life. Um, I've had conversations with, with, with people who voted for Donald Trump, who support Donald Trump, um, who also voted for me, right? And, and there's a pretty big gulf between, um, 
you know, th this demagogue uh, and, you know, a 30-something-year-old queer kid from Truro. Um, I don't think those voters, I, I think most, most good, decent people that I know were, were, were horrified and, and, and disgusted by that. Um, and if they aren't, it, it likely is how they're receiving that information, right? Sort of what they're seeing. Um, and so I do really think we need to focus on healing um, and on, on, on bringing folks together. I think we need to hold these domestic terrorists accountable and we need to actively go after them as aggressively as we went after Al Qaeda uh, because it poses as significant, if not more of a threat. Um, but we also need to understand that uh, this, this fraying of sort of the fabric that brings us together, we gotta find ways to kind of pull one another together. Um, and that's my sense, right? And talking to you know, my colleagues, look, I serve with a number of Republicans who represent Cape Cod. Um, you know, th they were horrified long before this. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and they, very, they, they view this very clearly for what it is. The governor views this very clearly for what it is. Um, and so that I think it is really important that we both, uh, we need to stem what's a very significant threat to our security um, and to our prosperity, which is which is white supremacists and domestic terrorists, but then we also need to find ways to sort of, you know, bring bring folks together and and, and to also demonstrate that government can work again. Um, and look, that means that may mean putting aside some really big, important, progressive priorities, right? That that we all really care about. Um, but I think we've got to find a real path forward. And and I am actually confident that I think Joe Biden and Kamala Harris bring. Um, a life experience and a set of skills and an understanding of legislating, I think that um, hopefully will move us forward and it'll be a heck of a lot easier to do now because you know the Democrats are gonna control the United States Senate. It's gonna be a divided Senate, right? But it's gonna mean we're able to, we're gonna be able to actually bring a climate bill to the floor, right? And, and, and there are Republicans who support this, right? We're gonna be able to bring um, civil rights legislation and protections for LGBTQ people to the floor, right? We're gonna be able to bring so many, you know, all, all of the, the president-elect nominees, right, are gonna be able to have an up and down, up or down vote as they deserve. And so I think that's gonna move us forward. Um, and, and, and uh, but I, I think if anything, the last several months since this election until now, we are more divided than I think we ever perceived or thought. Um, maybe a little less on Massachusetts. Massachusetts uh, pr pretty resoundingly is not a fan of, of what's going on nationally in, in this era. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's challenging, it's emotionally draining. I think there's some real important outrage and exhaustion, particularly that, that, that Americans of color feel just in seeing the real contrast between um, uh, how, how, I mean, there's just a, a lot of work there, uh, but all taken together, I, I, I'm kind of hopeful. You can say it. there's a huge disparity between how a black person holding a sign oh, in the middle of the street. Oh, 110 percent. I mean, a white look, person can, scaling the. Capital. I mean, can you imagine? Can Can you imagine black and brown protesters, or even queer protesters, or or any, or the women's march even, scaling the Capitol, using, uh, bringing chemical weapons into the building, ransacking offices, uh, and then basically being sort of gently escorted out? I mean, I, it, it's like. It's unfathomable. And, and, and for those of us who serve in government, I mean, just the fact that this happened, I mean, I, you know, I've worked in, a, you know, I, I worked for the Clinton Global Initiative. I interned at the Obama White House. I've worked in state government. I know how, how details work, right? How security works. When you're doing this work, especially in the state house or in the Congress, you have a perception that there's, you know, public servants who are keeping you safe. Um, the fact that it didn't happen mm -hmm. and that um, there's some real, uh, some, 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 some big answers, you know, questions need to be answered. Um, yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a whole lot, but there's also, you know, look, there's, there's some really, there's a lot we've been able to get done that have been really exciting and, and, and important too. You're I'm signing a bill later today too, right? I'm hoping that the silver lining in all of this <laughs> is that like, when you speak of unity, I'm hoping that we can unify as a country in saying that that is not acceptable. Exactly, right? I'm when, hoping when, that is the unifying moment that we can take out of this. Look, we can disagree politically on a whole host of things, right? Um, and, and, and we can even disagree on some of the more essential things, which is which is really hard to do, especially when some of that disagreement is, you know, basically violates, you know, whether or not we're able to, to, to live our lives as we want to live our lives, right? But, but that is just, the line was crossed long, long ago. 
but but this just should really solidify. I, I think anyone who thinks that's acceptable, I mean, this is domestic terrorism, pure and simple, that has been fed by white supremacy, and there's a long, long history of this. Um, and to have this demagogue, demagogue president who has lit a match, um, that is just unacceptable. And, and, and I, I really haven't heard from and don't know any, any decent people um, who feel otherwise. You know, look, I'm, I'm sure we, 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 we know there are some, but, but we've got to draw a line there, certainly. Let's talk about something really happy. <laughs> I mean, aside yeah. from you being sworn in again, you have a lot of- Yeah, it's uh, my third term. Yeah, so, congratulations. Thank, thank you. I mean, it was a little different, right? We, um, it, it was a remote swearing in, and we had been in session to 4.45 a.m., and then you had to basically turn around and talk about an all-nighter, all right? And, and, and we, we now vote remotely, in part, to kind of keep everyone safe for COVID-19. Um, you know, so you're just like, anyway, it was, a, it was an interesting all-nighter, but we got some big, important stuff done. Uh, and then to turn around and, and be sworn into my my third term, um, you know, a little different. Usually, you have you know everyone kind of gathers together, and 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 you're able to sort of celebrate. Um, this was more sort of me standing in front of my uh, <laughs> my little uh, camera thing um, and uh, taking a know what we did. I was wearing I, I was wearing proper. I, I wore like proper pants. I wasn't wearing sweatpants. I mean, like <laughs> for the occasion. look, there's for the occasion. Like, I mean, there's there's many a time where you're like, you know, on top of dressed, and then you're like. <laughs> No, we just figured that January 6th was supposed to be this really celebratory moment for people like you, for people like John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. And so I'm sorry you didn't get to celebrate like you normally would have, but we, we thought about that. And so we brought you a little champagne Aww. so that you could have your celebratory moment now with us. Let's celebrate. Ooh, congratulations, God. Julian. Thank it's the good you. Stuff. Look at these. <laughs> oh, wow, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. A little Bill Clinton uh, throwback music. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, babe. You're welcome. Cheers to you, hey, Julian. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers to you guys, too. It's been a, a, a wild year, right? Um, I'm glad to see it, it, it gone, but, uh, you know, brighter things. And, and people have also been making it work, right? And, and you tour an example of that, mixing things up and thank doing you. good things in our community. So, Cheers. Cheers. I, I did want to thank you for your work as of late um, with COVID testing. You've been instrumental and also very vocal about bringing more COVID testing to the Outer Cape. And me and Bob both were lucky enough to take advantage of some of thank the- Thank you for that. Yeah, you had a really good experience, right? Both of you did. It was great. Like split. This is, and, and Outer Cape Health Services deserves just so much credit. I mean, they are incredible. I, I think folks really, really should appreciate and treasure this remarkable resource that we have. Um, you know, look, that they're, they're what we've got. You know, Provincetown is the community that is furthest from a hospital anywhere in the Commonwealth. Anywhere, right? So you can be in like Central Mass, Western Mass, somewhere in a little <laughs> hull town. You're closer to a hospital than, than we are here in Provincetown. Um, and Outer Cape just moved mountains to make this happen. And to see it rolling out, I, I too was tested um, when, when, when the program was just, just rolled out uh, before Christmas. I arrived in Wellfleet at like 2.03, was swabbed, had my results at, at, at 2.37. You know, it, it, so it's been a long, long road to get us a testing. Mm -hmm. um, there's really been some inadequacy in the distribution of testing um, here on Cape Cod versus elsewhere. Uh, but we were able to figure it out, you know, thanks to Outer Cape Health Services. Cape Cod Healthcare has been just totally remarkable in this too. Uh, and I think the one strength we really have as a region is we do really pull together, right? We all work together. I, I work with... Democrats and Republicans, right, who represent this region. And look, we got some disagreements and some some fundamental things, but you know, nine out of 10 of the things that I address in my work and nine out of 10 of the often um, the work, so much of the work of government, right, it's actually not partisan work, right? Mm -hmm. It's about um, helping people, you know, particularly in this most most difficult moment. So uh, mm -hmm. the testing we're pretty, we're pretty proud of, although it's just, uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, and then the vaccine, we're working on a vaccine rollout. Really, the one that need to urge people to be patient. Um, I know this has been a frustrating situation. Um, when I get frustrated, I, I blame two, looked at two things to blame. Uh, one is just the ineptitude of, of this current federal government and the just real abdication of, of everything, not only decency, but actually governing. Um, and then, you know, look, we have this fragmented market-based healthcare system um, 
here in Massachusetts and across the country. And I think it really is changing, it's really affected our ability to respond, right? So if you look at how our peer nations have been able to respond, part of how they've been able to do better is by having um, an equitable, robust, publicly funded healthcare system. And we don't have that here. Right. In Massachusetts, we probably have one of the closer things to it and have probably one of the best healthcare systems in the country, but still this fragmented system has created such vulnerability for us and it has made the logistics, it will be making the logistics of distributing vaccinations, which are so complicated, um, all that much harder. And so, you know, look, I get that people are frustrated, I get pe that people are anxious. Um, big shout out to Sarah Peak who in a recent healthcare bill that we passed, this is the bill I'm gonna go up to Boston today for the, the signing ceremony about, um, we included language, Sarah filed language and got language and we sustained it in the final bill um, about requ require, requiring coverage for a whole suite of COVID-19 related services, including asymptomatic testing for a certain subset of workers. We enumerate restaurant workers and hospitality workers in there, right? Knowing that even as we go into next summer, as the vaccine's still being rolling now, people are gonna need access to testing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, unlike last summer, right? When you'd be like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working six shifts at the Red Inn. I'd like to get a COVID test. How do I do that? My insurance won't cover it. It'll now be covered and you'll be able to get access that's to it. Great. So also that's these, all Sarah's work. These free um, asymptomatic tests have proven to be so important. It's since the asymptomatic free testing has taken place, 60% of positive cases on the Outer Cape have been found through these asymptomatic testing, which is really going to do some really great work to stem the spread of the virus here on the Outer Cape. Well, exactly, right? Because, you know, if you're able to get a COVID-19 test, um, you don't have symptoms. Uh, you probably wouldn't think you were sick. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you get the test. That's going to really change your behavior. It's going to say, all right, look, I need to quarantine for at least seven days. I need to get another test. I need to talk to anyone I've come into contact with. Um, you know, really, the, the more we can get to universal testing, the more we can get this a lot like, um, frankly, how, how we, we've done HIV prevention, especially in a world before PrEP, right, where, where we worked so hard and, and for almost, almost 15, 20 years, we had free on-demand testing, right? You can get an HIV test when you want, when you need it. That's how we really should be addressing COVID-19. I mean, there's so many lessons, right, that, that come, that really have informed the COVID-19 response uh, from the HIV epidemic, which, which here in Provincetown, we have a, a proud history about. Can I ask you something yes. about the vaccine rollout? Mm -hmm. um, so do you know anybody in town that's gotten their first dose yet? Have our health care? I do. You, mm -hmm. you do? Of course I do. Well, uh, Seashore Point was all vaccinated on Wednesday. Excellent. Dan McGee, my trainer, was, was vaccinated on Wednesday because he works Good. at the, uh, and I think he's okay with me saying that publicly. Uh, he works at, at Seashore Point. Um, so I believe the residents and, and staff at Seashore Point were vaccinated. Uh, staff at Cape Cod Hospital have already been vaccinated. I saw Lakia Mondale posted that she got her first. Um, Great. So essential workers, exactly. first responders are going to get vaccinated uh, next week and the week, week after. So police and fire will all be vaccinated. Um, then we're focusing on congregate care settings, right? If you live in, a, um, you know, you're someone who lives in sort of state supported housing for those with developmental disabilities or mental health challenges. Uh, what about restaurant workers? <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not there yet on restaurant workers, though. The fact that restaurant workers are enumerated now in law to cover asymptomatic testing with insurance coverage, that's going to be a big, big, big deal. Mm -hmm. um, in the economic development package we passed, uh, there's a $21 million fund for restaurants. Mm -hmm. Restaurants have been just so, 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 so hard hit. I almost feel that we've been a, a little fortunate as far as the calendars worked, right? Mm -hmm. We yeah. had a much I really expected we'd have a really devastating season. We had a muted season, but it was much more than we thought it would totally, be. Absolutely. Um, and now, you know, look, we're at a very dangerous time for COVID-19 in Cape Cod. You know, there was a thousand, over a thousand COVID, new COVID cases on Cape Cod in the 14 days leading up to Christmas. We're going to see even more than that. The hospital, Cape Cod Hospital, Falmouth Hospital, have never had more patients right now. They're, they're not at capacity, but it's, it's very... Um, substantial, but hopefully with a vaccine and also just a bit with the seasonality of this, um, I, I hope that next summer, you know, at, you know, at, at worst will look like um, summer 2020 looked and, and that was really challenging and difficult, but, but certainly not as, not as bad as um, a lot of other communities, Absolutely. you know, I think, I think of the restaurant industry and community in Boston and it's just a whole yeah. challenging, <laughs> challenging, challenging time, but 
they just shut Boston down for a few weeks, right? Yeah, which is a good which is a good sort of decision. I, I also think, you know, when, when when you talk to business owners, and I, I really have this perspective. You know, look, I spent 14 years waiting on tables, which is uh, it, it'll take me seven terms doing this to sort of surpass my restaurant service. <laughs> um, but I, I think predictability is really important, and so I think sometimes actually having an opportunity to be like, you know what, we're just going to shut down. Um, we're going to take sort of a breather there. That's actually then keeping your doors open, not having people come through the doors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so 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 we got to do what we got to do. Um, hopefully, with this new federal administration, the Biden Harris administration, particularly taking the Senate. Right, this is why Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff are so important. Right, we're going to see another round of stimulus. We're going to see support for states. Uh, we're going to get resources for towns, for states. Um, it's going to be a, a real big deal. You may see you may see two thousand dollars stimulus checks. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> I Link. set it down. Oh, I didn't. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us no, today, No, thank Julian. you for having me. It's a, you know, it's a trying, difficult time. Stay safe. You know, I think we really need people to, um, you know, stay vigilant. It's, this is going to be a, a long, dark, hard winter. We're so fortunate here on the Outer Cape, right? You know, you can, I, I basically have moved all my socializing to sort of walks, right? So when the weather is cooperating and you bundle up, you go out there and you just, you know, you're able to, to, to connect with people and enjoy this beautiful place. Um, but really urging people to continue to stay vigilant mm -hmm. through this uh, this tough time. And, and um, I, I think we have better better days are coming. So mm -hmm. let's go to Watson. Yeah, absolutely. You got it. I know you're going to get to Boston and sign some bills. I, I'm not signing. The governor signs. I just, I just sort of stand there in a mask and like, you know, try to look cute for a photo. So. You don't have to try. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julian. Have a really great day. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your time, Julian. Cheers. Cheers.